Hello everyone and welcome back. In this series of Spring Framework, we have discussed many topics till now. Please do check out the playlist from top right corner of your screen in case you want to learn some specific topic. In this video, we will be discussing validation and data binding in Spring Framework. Now without any further delay, let's start. First we need to understand what is validation. So if you are a web developer, you know that validating user input and ensuring that data is correct is very critical part of building a robust and reliable application. So validation is a process of checking if the data provided by user is correct and meets the required criteria. So what is the meaning of required criteria? So suppose your application needs data in a specific format, but user is sending data in some other format. So if we do not do the validation upfront, then that data will cause issue in the upcoming layers of your application. So that will result into errors or abnormal behavior of your application. So to avoid such situations, validation is very important. So in Spring application, validation is performed using the validation API which is provided. The validation API provides a set of annotations and classes that can be used to define the rules for which we want to check the data. Now let's see why we need validation. So validation is an important part of any application that accept user inputs. In the Spring application, validation can be used to ensure that the data provided by user is correct and meets the required criteria as we have just discussed. This helps to prevent error and ensures that application functions correctly. Now let's see how it can be implemented. To perform validation in Spring application, we can use validation API. That validation API provides a set of annotations that we will see in our hands-on session as well. So for the implementation part, we can use Hibernate's implementation of validator. For that, we just need to add one dependency in pom.xml if you are using Maven or in uh, gradle.build if you are using gradle as a build tool. So do not worry about these things. As of now, we will have a detailed session on Maven and how to manage the dependency when we will be discussing about Spring Boot projects in our upcoming sessions. Let's talk a little bit about Hibernate Validator before moving ahead. So what exactly is Hibernate Validator? It's a validation framework for Java that is built on top of Java Bean validation specification. So with Hibernate Validator, you can define constraints and validation rules on the fields and methods of your data model using annotations as well as XML files. The framework provides a set of built-in constraints such as at the rate not blank, at the rate size, at the rate min and max. So these kind of annotations are provided using which you can define your own custom constraints. By using Hibernate Validator in your application, you can ensure that data entered by the user or received from some external sources conforms to the rules and constraints defined in your data model. Thus, it will improve the overall quality and reliability of your application. Before checking the example code, let's see how we can add Hibernate Validator dependency to your Spring application. So there are two build tools that mainly we'll be using. One is Maven. For that, we have pom.xml file. And for Gradle, we have build.gradle file. So the dependency that we need to add is, in case of pom, we need to add uh, a dependency tag like this with a group ID org hibernate.validator and artifact ID hibernate-validator. And then we need to provide the version. But in case of Gradle, in the build.gradle file, we just need to add implementation and then these three details again, but in a different format because build.gradle is not an XML file. So it has its own way of storing the data. Now let's try to understand it by looking at one example. In this, we will be validating a simple form input. It can be from HTML page or direct API call also. So we'll be using API call. We want to ensure that the user enter a valid name and a an age. Now let's move to uh, Spring Toolsuit's IDE for demo. I'll be using another tool today for the demo, which is Postman. Using Postman, we can test different HTTP requests such as post, put, delete, etc., which we cannot directly test using the browser. So here you can see pom.xml, which I was talking in our previous slide. So here in the dependencies section, we already have a couple of dependencies uh, which were already added while I was creating this project. And on top of that, I have added this particular dependency. This is for Hibernate Validator. So once this is added and you build the project, all the required jars, they will be automatically downloaded by Maven. 
So now we have this user model suppose. So this is a user uh, DTO which is having uh, two fields name and age and it is having its uh, setter and getter methods and one two string method. On top of that I have one user controller. So it is having a uh, rest controller annotation that makes it a rest uh, controller itself. So it will be able to uh, handle the rest calls. Then inside that I have one post mapping with the pattern slash users. So whenever slash user mapping is hit by the user then this particular method will be called. So let's see what is written in the method itself. So in the method post user. So what we are doing we are expecting a request body itself of type user. So whoever is requesting this user or posting the data to this uh, endpoint they should be passing the user DTO model itself as a data. So what we are doing we are just printing whatever detail is getting passed and returning success. So now let me just start this application and then we will try to hit the API from Postman also. To start uh, the Spring application right click on the Spring project then run as Spring Boot application because I have created a Spring Boot application itself. So here we can see the application is started on port 8080. Now let's move to Postman. So in Postman uh, this is the kind of interface that you will be able to see. So here this is an address bar where you can uh, enter the end complete endpoint and from this drop down you need to select the type of HTTP request that you are going to execute. So in our case it is post. So uh, I have selected post provided the URL here slash user and in body we have to provide if you remember in the request body we have mentioned that uh, we will be providing uh, an object of user. So let's try to do that. So uh, in case of providing a data which we want to post we need to go to the body section and here we have to select raw and JSON from this particular drop down if it's not JSON. So uh, let's try to uh, submit the request without providing any data. So in this particular case actually automatically uh, Spring will throw you a standard error. Let me show you that. So when I click on send you can see it has already provided me error bad request. So why actually it's a bad request because it is expecting some kind of object. It can be a null object or a wrong object but it is expecting some kind of object. So it's a bad request and it is returning status as 400. Okay so let's try to pass an empty object. So uh, object in case of JSON is nothing but something which is enclosed in the parenthesis or the curly braces. So let me just send it. So in this case actually it should not return me this bad request 400 but success and it should be able to print uh, both the value name and age as null here. Okay, so let me just try to send this request. So here you can see it has returned success with the status 200 okay and if we check in the logs a user value is printed which is name is equal to null and age is equal to null. So why is that because both of these are objects. Uh, this, these are the, this is the wrapper class integer I have used so that is why it is null. If I have if I would have used int then its value would have been zero. So uh, by default it has created one object but without any values because we have not sent any value. So uh, as so far you can see it's a big issue because suppose in your application itself you need this data. These two fields are mandatory. So one way to do that is we can provide a validation at the front end itself that can run on the client side itself. But that is not sufficient. We have to provide uh, the validation at the server side as well or at the back end also. So to do that we can use the hibernate validator here. So we have just seen one annotation which was not blank. So let's try to use that particular annotation. So I have used not blank. So in this it will provide me one option as message. So in case if name is blank it should give me uh, what message it should return. So we can mention that custom message here. So name cannot be blank. Okay. Now let me just uh, restart this particular application without providing any validation for age as of now. So let me just restart it. Okay, so now the application is restarted. So let me try to send the request again with the same data. Okay, so it has returned success again. Let me check in the logs. It is null because we are not providing any data. So why it has not returned any validation message? 
okay yeah i forgot to mention one uh, annotation here so once we use uh, suppose at the rate not blank here we need to tell at the controller level that this model or this dto should be validated so to do that we have uh, an annotation at the rate valid which is available so once i used at the rate valid let me just uh, restart this application once again and try to submit the request with the same data so the application is up let me send it again so here you can see it's a bad request so why it's a bad request because data is not valid so if you see in the logs uh, the complete detail will be written here so if we scroll to the right side so it is saying that there is an error in the field for user and field name is name because we have added validation for the name only if you move further on the right hand side we will be able to see the message as well so here you can see the code which is used is not blank and if we move a little bit more further on the right hand side so here you can see the message which we have defined name cannot be blank so we will be uh, trying to print this particular message or try to return this message to the caller itself so to do that there is one more uh, code that we need to add here as an argument which is binding result so what is binding result so it will contain if there is any error or not so let's try to use that here so if result dot has errors so it will tell you if actually there are some errors then we let's try to return those errors itself okay so let's return result dot get get all errors so whatever errors are there let me just try to uh, get it and return it back so it is actually returning a uh, list of object errors okay let's see if they have implemented two string yes they have implemented two string because we are returning string so uh, in this case actually we will be getting a very uh, big output but it will contain all the errors for all the fields in the validation that we have defined if there are no errors then it will print the actual user which we are passing and return the success okay now let me just try to restart the application once again okay so the application is restarted and let me try to resend this request so here you can see that complete message which you, earlier we were able to see in the logs only now it is available to the caller as well so they should also know that uh, where is the issue we can even refine it further while returning the value instead of returning all the errors we can identify some specific strings if we want to return as a meaningful message okay so suppose uh, instead of this um, I just want to return that there is some errors data is invalid okay so that will not make much sense but we can include that particular message as well in the field wherever we are having some validation issues okay so let's try to uh, submit one uh, valid request also let me just restart this particular uh, application and now let's try to submit a proper request so proper request is we have one attribute and let's provide its value as lazy programmer and the second attribute which is age that is an integer so let me just provide one value uh, suppose under 18 because uh, we will be adding one more validation which will be on the attribute age that it should be it should not be less than 18 okay so let me just uh, send this request so here you can see it is able to return success because there is no validation issue we have provided the name it's neither blank nor null okay. now let's try to add a validation on age as well so to add a validation on age there is one more annotation which is min so min what min uh, annotation will do uh, this annotation will check the minimum value which we are providing for this particular age attribute so in the min we have one attribute which is eight value so there we have provided 18 to be as the minimum value and the second property is message so what message we want to display to the user when uh, actually the value is less than 18 okay so let's try to uh, return uh, the messages itself so that we'll be able to see the complete detail in the postman itself okay so let me just uh, restart the application once again so uh, in this case we will be sending again name as a valid value and age which is less than the required value so here we have mentioned 18 and we will be sending 15 okay let me just restart the application once and then we'll submit the request so the application is up again let me send the request again and here you can see it has returned an error so you can see the error detail also 
the minimum age is 18 so as soon as we provide 18 we should be able to get the success message again and we should be able to see the uh, user detail printed on the console so let me just send it again so here you can see success is returned and the complete user detail is also forwarded to the controller so using these annotations and hibernate validator we can make sure that whatever data user is uh, submitting or posting to your application that is a valid data and is acceptable for the application so if data is not acceptable for the application that will definitely result into errors and issues in your application now if the validation part is clear let's move to the next topic which is data binding so what is data binding and why do we need it so it is a process of mapping data from one source to another. In Spring application, data binding is used to map data from HTTP request to Java objects and in the opposite manner as well. That means the Java objects are converted back to the HTTP response details. So how to perform data binding in Spring framework? To perform data binding in Spring Framework, we can use the data binding API provided by Spring itself. The data binding API provides a set of annotations similar to the validation itself. To use data binding API in Spring application, first we need to create one Java object or POJO class that will hold the data from HTTP request. We then can use the annotation to map the request of that payload to the created POJO. Like we have seen in our previous demo where I have shown you how to uh, validate the data there we can see we have used one user DTO class that is automatically mapped with the JSON object that we are passing from the postman so if you remember in the postman we are just providing one JSON structure that contains name and its value age and its value but in our application itself we are not parsing that anywhere that is already taken care by spring framework but what we have done we have used one annotation at the rate request body so there we have provided that whatever body is provided in the request that should be mapped to a user object so it was automatically mapped to the user object by spring framework so if you have any queries regarding validation or data binding how it works in spring please do let me know in the comment section also if you like the video please like share and subscribe and share it across with your dev community that's it for the validation and binding in spring framework we will try to cover some more concepts in the upcoming videos and if you want me to cover some specific topic in spring please do let me know i hope this video was helpful to you thank you so much for watching and keep learning